Well, hey, friends. I... Good grief. Um, I find myself wanting to document this day. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever see the light of day. Uh, sometimes my vlogs don't. But this is a day I want to document. Um, some health things are going on uh, for me and Colt, and I just want to capture this day so I remember the emotions, the feelings, the things that were said as we move forward. So right now I am on my way to go get some blood work. Um, thankfully it's just right near my house, so and it's in the same plaza as the Dollar Tree, so I may sneak in there for a second. I don't really don't need anything, but we'll see. So we're back in the truck. We are going to head to the doctor. There's a little Colty bear and his raccoon hat. <laughs> so my little guy is sleeping back there. Oh, we can't really see him. Um, but I'm going to show you really quick what I brought with me. So I've got um, the Cultivate book from Laura Casey, and I've got my planner with me. I still need to change out my cover, but I thought that would kind of be appropriate to have here at the doctor in case we have to book any follow-up appointments. Um, and Colty Bear. Hey, buddy. Colty. Colty. Hey, buddy. Goldie bear. Hey, okay, we're here. I gotta go inside, buddy. Hi, oh, buddy. Hi. Oh, my hand. Well, hey. well, hey guys, um, today's video is probably going to be a little bit harder for me to film, but I wanted to let you um, just know some things that are going on in my life. Um, many of you I know follow me over on Instagram and we've connected over there and I'm able to share bits of my life um, differently than what I share here. I feel like sometimes here is a little bit more how-to and over there is a little bit more heart stuff and a bit more of my everyday um, and a couple months ago in November I think it was um, I had had my morning quiet time and the word joy kept coming back to me and my middle name is joy um, for a long time when I was a child, I did not want that to be my middle name. Everybody else I knew's middle name was Marie or Anne, um, and I wanted that. I didn't want to have a middle name like Joy, but my dad had picked it out because he said I brought so much joy into he and my mom's lives the day I was born. And my life has been a continued process of finding joy. My heart is one that is wrapped up fully in the Lord, and He is my constant source of joy. But there are things over the years that have robbed joy from my life. And as I was sitting there having my morning devotions, um, I realized that I was not as joyful as I used to be. And so that was sort of the theme of the day, and I journaled, and I read verses, and I prayed, and um, later that week, we had uh, a parent 
connection group that meets um, once a month at our church and all of the parents get together and we have snacks and um, just kind of like a Sunday school class just for parents. There's discussion and uh, different things. And up on the stage, um, the leader, Sherry, had these paper mache letters that spelled joy. And they were big and they were... Um, they weren't perfect. They were handmade, um, and her whole talk was about imperfection, um, and especially being with joy. And so some of the discussion questions centered around things that rob our joy, and how do we handle things um, like the day-to-day -day things that don't go our way, or like the major disruptions, um, the major disruption, the minor disruptions that happen during a day, how do we handle those? And then how do we handle major disruptions? And when it came to my turn to talk, I shared that minor disruptions totally derail me. Um, I am not one who does well with things bumping along in my everyday. But the larger disruptions, I often see God's hand, and faith carries me through, and I am more dependent on Christ, and I can see his hand at work in the large things. And I said that, and I said, I have never been diagnosed with anything, and neither have my children, so I can't speak to that area of life, but I said other things. I have walked hand in hand with the Lord and I have seen him carry me through. Two hours later, I had a diagnosis. And um, I can tell you that I can see his hand through it all. And I can tell that he's carrying me. Um, a few weeks prior, I had been experiencing some symptoms. And they were really random symptoms. And I can tell you that apart from having them for those few days, I have not had them since. And it was enough that I just said, this is not right. Um, I need to go to the clinic. I don't have a family doctor here in Ontario, um, but everybody has like free health care, so there's tons of clinics. And so one Sunday uh, after church, I was just talked to my mother-in-law briefly about some of what I was experiencing, and she offered to watch the kids, and I ran over to the clinic, and it was a miracle there wasn't a wait. Um... And I felt silly, because the symptoms seemed kind of silly. I would rather not go into all of those details, but um, they did like a urine test and nothing came back, and so I just felt stupid with that regard. And then um, they decided to send me for blood work and for an ultrasound. Um, a few days later, my symptoms went away, and I haven't experienced them since. Um, and so I booked my ultrasound appointment and it was going to be two weeks out. And on that appointment day, I had to drag my kids downtown, um, which is not a convenient place to go. And it was raining and, um, it was, I had wanted to cancel the appointment because I wasn't feeling anything and I just felt very silly. But my husband said to go, so I did. And it was an early morning appointment, um, one of the first of the day. And I had both kids, and they were going to have to be waiting in the waiting area for me while I was having this ultrasound done. And there was a really compassionate woman doing the ultrasound, and she felt really bad that my kids would have to wait in the hall. And so, and my kids, if, if you don't know, at the time were three and six. And so she was able to find us a larger room that wasn't being used, and she um, let the kids come in the room, which was really awesome. And as she was doing the ultrasound, the whole appointment was like 45 minutes. Um, she kept asking me why I was there. And I just felt so stupid because I was like, you know, I, I'm not, I told her my symptoms. I'm like, I'm not experiencing these things anymore. I just feel silly for even coming. Um... 
And then she had to have her superior do it. I think, I don't know if she was in training or what, but her superior had to come in and he had to do the ultrasound as well, just to check her findings. And he kept asking, like, why are you here? And so I explained and, um... The things that they said just made it seem like I was there for, like, they weren't seeing anything. So I left really discouraged. I never did go for the blood work because I just felt stupid um, and that I was wasting everyone's time, including my own. And so a couple weeks later, I a week later, actually, I got the, res the, uh, the call that the results were in. And because I didn't feel like anything was wrong, I drug my feet on going and finally... It was that Sunday after church. Um, I just, I was, I had free time and I ran to the clinic a half hour before closing just to hear what they had to say and figure I'd be on my merry way. Except that the doctor looked at my results and she told me at first that I was full of gallstones, which is something that I knew because I had had gallbladder attacks. Um, after I started, like when I had Aubrey, I would get acute gallbladder attacks, the kind where you can't breathe, where the pain is just so intense that you just want to die. Like it's just intense pain. But I haven't felt, had those in a very long time and I've managed it, I believe, through eating. Um, Trim Healthy Mama, I think, has been kind of that really amazing program that's just kept me good. So... <laughs> I had been experiencing burning though, like around, um, uh, I guess my rib cage, um, and just such intense burning, uh, that it would make me lay down for like, I remember one day it was like an hour and a half. I was just trying to function. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. And so I would get these bouts, but they were, if I needed to operate and do something, I could. But it was enough that it would like make me lay down wanting it all to go away. And it was just this burning. And I've had my appendix removed before. And if you've ever had that happen, um, that is the pain that I experienced. Prior to the appendix coming out, there was acute pain. Like really painful, throw up kind of pain. It hurt so bad. But prior to that, throughout the day, it was this burning sensation in my abdomen. Um, and that's what I had been experiencing. And so she sort of talked to me briefly about having my gallbladder removed. And um, I think I, I must have said something like, oh, what, you know, I've been managing it fine with eating. Like I haven't had any acute pain or anything like that. And I think she was thinking that I was saying no to surgery, which I wasn't. Um, and she said, I'll let you know that you're going to be 40 soon. And I can tell you that you will have issues with this again. And I knew she was right because it has been something that's coming up over and over and over again in my life. And, um, I was okay with, with having the surgery. So she said that she would go ahead, um, she recommended a surgeon and she was going to drop the requisition for me to go meet with him and yada yada. And I thought, okay, so that's, that's the thing. That's why I'm here. That was the pain. Except she said, there was a problem with my liver and I don't want to go into specifics of it but there was a problem with my liver and um, the doctor who will take out my gallbladder is also a liver specialist and so when I see him um, we will talk about my liver I'm guessing and what is going on there and she did tell me that the good news is that the liver regenerates itself so um, the good news. Um, but the scary part has come. She said that there was a spot, I think she said between the liver and gallbladder. If you're like a nurse or a doctor and you know the anatomy, I don't quite. Um, I believe, and it, this was all just happening and I was like, uh, in shock. So I, if I'm wrong, forgive me. But she said there was a spot, um, that didn't look normal that came on the ultrasound and she wanted me to go she said we could either send you for another ultrasound or we could send you for a CAT scan and she's like and because of where it is and what this looks like I'm going to send you for a CAT scan and 
I said, okay. And so she started to fill out the requisition form for the CAT scan. And she said, if you don't hear from them in two months, you need to give me a, a call. You need to come back in and see me because you need to be seen before two months. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I said, okay. Um, because the thing about living in, at least in where I live in Ontario, um, we are the largest city within at least an hour and a half, and that's the next closest hospital. So all of the outlying communities and towns in our area come to our hospital. It's like the hub of the north. So um, things can, there can be really long wait times, is what I'm trying to say. So. I said, okay, and so she started filling out the requisition for him, I'm just sitting there, and then all of a sudden, she puts her hand down, and she says, no, nope, I can't do this, no. And she tore the paper, and she said, I can't, she said, I have to, I have to be able to sleep at night, and I can't, knowing that you might not get this for a while. She said she was going to send me for a CAT scan. I said okay um, and so she filled out the paperwork for that and she sent me home with medication and like thankfully I haven't had to use it that much um, which is really good but the following day I was on Facebook and I don't go on Facebook very much at all but I happened to go on and the very first thing that I saw was a friend of mine who had to go to the city an hour and a half away for a CAT scan because the CAT scan in our city wasn't, people weren't even getting in until May. And so I had to go for blood work, like the doctor was sending me for another round of blood work because she was afraid that my platelets and my all of my counts would be off because of what was going on with my liver. And she said, don't ever feel that you're stupid. Like, you should not be feeling these things. You need to have this looked at. So when I saw that information from my friend, I ended up talking to my mother-in-law, and she kind of works hand-in-hand -hand with a doctor um, in town, and he actually said that, yes, um, if he needs his patients to have a CAT scan right away, he has to fill out this like special form, and um, so I knew that I would be seeing the doctor again for my blood work. And so when I saw her again after I had the blood work done, um, I went on... This all happened on a Sunday. I went on a Monday and got the blood work, and then I saw her on Thursday because the blood work came in so quickly. And praise God, there was only one like liver enzyme that was like it should have been like a 36, and it was a 37. Everything else was perfect. So, um, which is like a major praise report. Um, and so. I told her about the CAT scan situation, and she, I don't think she was really aware, but they were going to call the hospital, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to make this a little bit shorter. Um, anyways, they weren't able to get a hold of the hospital. So my family and I, we left and we went to Walmart. Um, I met them over across the street at Walmart. And um, we were doing Christmas shopping, and I got a call in the middle of Walmart, and they want to send me for an MRI. So, um, this all happens next week. The 23rd, I go for my appointment for my gallbladder and to talk about my liver. Um, and I'm sure that we'll probably book a date for surgery. And everyone has assured me, and I kind of knew this too, but gallbladder surgery isn't that big of a deal. It's very simple and quick, and I'll be at, in and out in no time. Like, you go home that day kind of thing. Um... So I'm not worried about it. Um, I've had two C-sections and I have had my appendix removed. This will be, now be my fourth surgery on my abdomen. <laughs> so yes. Um, and then I go for my MRI on the 28th. And I can tell you that at different points I have let my mind wander to places like cancer. And it's very overwhelming and very frightening to think about. So I really do my best not to, and I'm very good kind of about that. Um, but I would cover your prayers because it could be something. Um, and that's a very real possibility. But I'm standing on faith that it's not. And I have had people praying over me for weeks um, and I guess months now. 
that it will be nothing and it will just be sort of a technicality um, and that's what I'm standing on and so in this time um, that very Monday the day after I saw the doctor we'd been dealing with Colt having some issues that presented itself as though it were celiac disease he has things wrong with his teeth um, that the dentist told us was some sort of deficiency that he's had um, and the pattern of his, the, the markings in his teeth are line up with celiac and he also presented a lot of symptoms that were making me very concerned um, about potentially having this autoimmune di disorder with gluten and so we went to the doctor um, actually we went to the doctor that Monday it, this was all like within a couple of days so I went for my blood work that morning and then the following in the afternoon I took Colt to the doctor and with everything that I presented to the doctor okay guys lighting has changed it is actually a couple hours later my camera battery died um, what are you gonna do I don't even know where I left off. Um, I think I was telling you um, the doctor didn't refute anything I was presenting um, in regards to symptoms of celiac. He sent us for a test and we went the following day, so Tuesday. So it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, Colt actually sat in the same exact chair that I had sat to have his blood drawn and it was five vials of blood and it was tough. Um, and we were, got the results uh, a few weeks later, um, and he does not have celiac, which is um, an answer to prayer. The only, I don't even call it downside, because that's not the right word at all. It's, uh, he just has symptoms of having some sort of food intolerance or something of that nature. Um, and it really seems to point to gluten. Um, so we have uh, more or less, it's not that we've gone gluten free, but with Trim Healthy Mama, I don't eat um, wheat. Uh, and so we just have sort of stopped like a lot of like, the crackers and any cereal that they were having. We very limited on bread um, and when we do it is a sprouted bread. Um, and when he does eat things that um, are not part of more of a whole foods, real foods kind of diet that doesn't include gluten, um, he doesn't do too well. So we've not done like a complete sort of um, em elimination diet or anything like that, but we've been focusing more on foods that don't have gluten in them just for our own health um, uh, reasons. So anyways, that was kind of a, a mixed answer. He still has the teeth markings um, of some sort of deficiency. All of the things that could cause teeth mark lines in their teeth in his incisors as well as his molars. If you look that up, that's a, a sign of celiac. Um, and any other indication are things that just were not the case uh, during my pregnancy. So anyways, um, that is what has been going on with us um, health-wise. So yes, <laughs> um, we just, we trust that God has everything under control. Um, and we just, co we covet, I covet your prayers uh, for me. Um, and I'm sure everything will be okay. <laughs> and if not, he is still God, and he's still on his throne, and I still still trust him fully. If you hear my washing machine, it's just on the other side of this wall. I just wanted to finish this video while I still kind of look like this. Um, and fill you guys in on what has been going on with us. Um, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, like I said, I covet your prayers. There are other things that are just happening in our life right now that are really heavy and really hard, and it has limited me on things like social media and even watching YouTube videos, let alone creating them. 
Um, I just don't have a lot to give right now. Uh, and I will. <laughs> I will again. Um, I will. But uh, just please be patient with me and thank you so much for your prayers. Anyways, I will see you guys in my next video and thank you so much for watching.